Welcome back to London, where the country and Commonwealth are preparing for a new king. The world has watched Charles basically since birth. The triumphs and the tribulations of his life have all played out in the public eye. Still, there's a side only the family knows. Today I sat down with India Hicks, granddaughter of Lord Mountbatten, daughter of Lady Pamela, and goddaughter of King Charles. How's that relationship been through your life? Well, he's always been there. I mean, on the, the day I was christened, he was there holding me, uh, through to confirmations, through to messages when I got married last year. Um, he's an incredibly considerate godfather. As a child, I would receive for a birthday or Christmas a, a, a piece of china, and it came in a wonderful box. And, and there was a moment in your childhood where you were slightly confused by being given a gravy dish <laughs> or a teacup. And now as an adult, of course, I have the most incredible set of fine china. When I was confirmed, he designed a piece of jewelry for me, which was an I and an H bracelet. And the I and the H were interlocked. And I have that obviously still. Again, just the, the thought and the consideration of something that was so personal, designed by him for me, just shows the kind of man, the kind of considerate man we have privately, but also the considerate man that we're going to have publicly. It's really something to see these family photos of you as a little girl and the now king. How has that informed your life to be part of this mythic family? My grandfather was very much part of the royal family. He was very close to King Charles, really a mentor to him. And so I've, I've grown up spending quite a bit of time around them, right up until the, the great honor of being uh, invited to be a bridesmaid at his wedding. Now I look back and I think a billion people watch that. And it was such an extraordinary moment in history for all of the wonderful reasons of everybody believing this was a fairy tale we wedding to the heartbreak of what followed. So that moment in history was so significant. And now I look back and think, goodness, I was part of that. Do you remember being nervous that day? No, I remember thinking I had a big job to do uh, and I liked that. And Sarah Armstrong Jones and I were in charge of that 25 foot train. Diana wanted that incredibly long, very dramatic train. She really is looming large as an observer over the coronation. There's more talk about Diana now to me than there has been in a long time. Why do you think that is? I, I think She's the mother of a future king, so I think she will always be relevant. And when, and when a, a subject such as a coronation comes, obviously family matters. I think we're, we're in a very good place, um, in a very kind place, where Camilla has been very accepted. And I think that that's right. So I think that the balance between the Diana Camilla has calmed down. And Camilla has certainly earned her right to be much admired. She's a remarkable woman who has dedicated her life to service and duty since becoming the wife of the future monarch. And I think we see her as a very strong woman who takes on some very interesting um, causes, uh, domestic violence, literacy. And I think these are, are hugely relevant topics. Of course, the difference between her and Diana is, is is obvious that they were two completely different women. But I don't think Camilla should be underestimated for a moment. And I think we've seen almost a rehabilitation if you look back 20 years ago. Harry's book, though, really tried to alter that current reality. What were your thoughts? I think it's a very difficult subject. And I think that we should focus on what's happening right now, which is the history of a coronation and not the bubbles and the bumps of trouble that have been coming along the way. So I think that the moment that we're seeing right now is a historical moment and that the conversation, the world's conversation, should be around Charles and the kind of king he's going to be. I'm lucky that I have been um, invited to work with the Prince's Trust, but it was started in 1976. The Prince of Wales had just come out of the Royal Navy. Since that time, a million young people have been helped and I work a lot with them and I hear them and I hear the conversations and I can see firsthand the impact of this trust. Now, I think it reflects enormously on a man and his vision and they are always talking at the Prince's Trust about inclusivity, diversity and equality and I think these are the key themes that we will see in this new reign. 
And, and I think that that's very significant. Obviously, the conversation a lot is about the modernization of monarchy. And I think that that's key as well. I think it is important that there are some changes. And I think the slimming down of that guest list at the Abbey is significant and, and, and appropriate. That includes your own mother, though, who has such a history as a bridesmaid to Her Majesty. Personally, how has that been for, for your mother? You know, my mother is 94 and unbelievably wise. And, um, and she immediately understood that if, if giving her seat up meant that somebody who had done an enormous amount of good could benefit, then that was the right thing to do. You know, my mother was, she will have seen three coronations because she, of course she saw the Queen's father as well and she had this little green cape, little velvet green cape made for her for that coronation. We have it still. Um, and I think my mother remarked at the Queen's coronation how young and alone the Queen looked. She was this young, fresh princess. And now on Saturday, we're going to see a king and his wife of a certain age with all of this experience. And I think he will have a very good understanding of what kind of monarch he wants to be. So we're in such a different time, such a different place. And it feels really right. And I always think that they're, 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 it's the four of them. I think we have William and Catherine coming up behind who also have their own ways of running their offices. And, and I think that, again, we've got a lot of strength in that, in those four. And I think there's an awful lot of chit-chat about that we're losing the pomp and the pageantry. I don't think we are at all. I think we're going to see something extraordinary on Saturday that will fulfill us all and what we want to see from a monarchy and yet have the significance of being mindful of the time and the climate that we're living in.